Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so great to chat with you and congratulations on your Emmy nomination. Um, Thank how you. exciting. Thank yeah. You. Yes. Yes. It's amazing. Um, yeah. Three and so for you three. We're super excited about yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And you share it with Alex uh, Sabo, is that right? Sabo, yeah. He um, is my assistant editor. And this season, I promoted him to um, co-editor, especially on episode 311, Mon City, for sure, nominated for, because that was such a massive episode. It was the second longest episode in the history of Ted Lasso. And um, he helped me kind of work on that and get that in place while I was kind of cutting um, the other uh, rest of the season. But it worked out great. It Ted Lasso is a show about mentorship, and I really wanted to give you know Alex that that uh, recognition, and also melded it with Francesca Castro, um, her assistant editor. Yeah, yeah, it's such a great episode, um, and I I realized too. Like, I know a lot of this season includes big stuff that happens off screen, like Nate quitting, and even Colin when technically when he comes out to the team, it like cuts away, um, mm -hmm. and the team wanting Nate to come back. Um, you know, we we see that at the beginning of the episode. Were there any scenes where the the team debates Nate's return that were cut, or like, um, what kind of editing considerations did you have to include with this particular storyline? Okay, so people ask that a lot. Are there yeah. any drop scenes or things on the cutting room floor? Not uh, really. The answer is yeah. uh, it's all very much intentionally written, and it's in the in the show. I mean, we have lines that we decide to cut. And of course, the flip side of that is we have lines that are thought of and created on the set that we add, um, uh, you know, just a, a quick one that comes to mind is Roy Kent giving his press conference and he refers to one of the press people. And he's like, Goblin King, go. Uh, I love those. <laughs> but those are like wonderful little bits of improv that are always uh, created. Um, in the case of episode nine of Colin coming out, um, that was always written and intended to go away and cut away um, to the locker room scene, uh, excuse me, to the scene with Isaac and Roy in the boot room. And um, it was written that way. It was intended that way. There wasn't anything missing there. However, Billy Harris has a beautiful performance that whole episode. He did try something there uh, when he's like, guys, guys, uh, Isaac's not gay. And he took a pause and he said, I am and um we had that in the cut for a while and and we all loved it and jason loved it because it was jason's idea to use you know the i am who i am from la cajo fall yeah and he had that inspiration in the middle of the early middle of the night i got the text in the middle of the night la times he was on london time saying i really want to use this song and uh so we had that idea and jason liked that kind of um symmetry between colin saying i am and then using i am who i am later but we often felt that that's a that storyline sort of resonates with me we all come out in our own ways and, and it was very personal and uh so we thought to keep that in the audience's imagination and uh, how he tells the team and then kind of come back to him to, to the end so that was a, mostly a writing decision but we did try to execute the timing and the edit yeah, I love how like it kind of like not seeing some of these big well, that was such a beautiful moment, but not seeing some of these big things that are happening kind of keeps everything moving forward. Mm -hmm. Um and there's there's a great little moment uh in Mom City when Dottie meets Rebecca and where Rebecca says, May I call you Dottie? And she says, sure, if you want me to respond. And K Ted rolls his eyes. It's really funny. It's such a funny little moment that really tells you so much about Ted's relationship with his mother. And I was wondering if you had a lot of those moments that you like kind of pulled or, or like made sure to keep just to show us that uh, without even telling us, showing us what that relationship is like. Mm -hmm. That particular one you're talking about, that was very much all Jason. He, this is why it's so great to have him in the editing process and he's there. I mean, he's the, you know, he's the, with us in the edit room in the trenches editing every episode. He was thinking there, he's like, you know, I mean, I felt that we, we see Ted is so annoyed by his mother throughout. We, it's constant. But he, on that particular one, wanted to find, see, he's like, do I, do, do I have an eye roll or something to kind of react to Dottie? Because I want to show that Ted is still a, fundamentally a good person and who believes in kindness and doesn't like that his mother is being snooty. 
to Rebecca, who, the person he just, she just met. So that was a specifically a Jason note to put that in. However, throughout Ted Lasso, you know, so much of the show plays on our cast's faces. It's all about Jason taught us this way back in season one. It's not about, you know, just having a joke, joke, joke. It's about taking these breaths and pauses and, and seeing the, the look on the characters faces. And we, we do that a lot. Um, I mean, to go back to Colin, for example, Ted in, the, in episode five is talking about, you know, uh, how, how he doesn't want to de deal with things in the big locker room speech at the end about, you know, fear and shame. And on the word shame, I found this beautiful reaction from Colin kind of taking that in because he hasn't come out yet and his um, being gay. So a source of shame. And I put that in and Jason loved that. So we're always looking for looks uh in among the 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 cast and they they do such a great job giving it to us and so it's about finding those right moments to, to let it breathe but the, i'm glad you caught that that's a good oh example. yeah it's it seems like it's such a great partnership between the two of you that you're able to like see those moments and pull them and, and they're able to give that to you so that's uh what a great collaboration there um you mentioned this at at the start the episode length uh this is pretty long this is the longest one um did that give you a bit of more freedom with editing or maybe to make give you more pressure? I would think there would be freedom, but maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, these were uh, mini movies like this season. It was like 12 mini feature films. And I uh, said to my uh, co-editor, um, Melissa, like right from the beginning that it's like, this is a, this is a lot, each of these episodes, and we're going to need to really dig into these and it's going to take much more of a schedule. And that's one of the reasons we leaned on our assistant editors and, and bringing them up. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, you could, you could criticize us as, you know, a lot of the fans were like, wow, it's really long this year. You know, maybe they need to edit it down more. Um, look, season one, if you watch it, it's very paced. That's the great effect of Bill Lawrence, who was so wonderful and it was very tighter and our episodes were, you know, we tried to keep them under 30 minutes, uh, you know, and then season two, that seemed to go out the window. And then season three became, you know, Jason said, it's like we're getting an extra season built into season three. So I really like seasons three and four in one season. So, yes, it definitely gives me freedom as an editor to take uh, the time with the moments. And that's what's been so beautiful about working on this show. You know, I come from cutting network comedy where you're on a clock. But Apple was always in their notes. I mean, we don't care about the length. We care about the story. So yes, it does give us freedom to like take uh, our time and find the little moments and, and so many beautiful montages like Jamie walking through the streets of Manchester. You know, just I just let those shots, you know, they shot them all, but I let, the, let them linger to that beautiful song by the Buzzcocks. Um, and um, like the, him walking off the field, off the pitch, sorry. Uh, I know, I always end. have that problem too. <laughs> the only pitch, yeah. So I'm still learning the soccer rules as an American. <laughs> but uh, him walking up the pitch to the, the um, applause from the Man City fans. He just took a little extra time with that and went around the horn and cut to the his mom watching and, and, and Nate watching and the pub cheering him and Rebecca and the coaches and and it was just really good to just take our time with those moments. So, yes, I would uh, lean toward freedom to answer your question. That's <laughs> great. And, you know, I enjoyed the longer episodes because mm -hmm. I just love spending time with these characters and in this world. So I really, really love that. Um, one of my favorite scenes in this episode, probably in this season, is Beard's confession um, and act of forgiveness to Nate. And I was thinking this probably had to be like, a lot of consideration with this scene because I mean I think up until this moment I was kind of on Beard's side like do we really want him back and then you know I mean even though I love Nate like I want Nate to come back but um but I was kind of like you know this feels too easy but Beard's confession really pulls it all together and I was like okay this is this is great so I was wondering um what kind of attention you had to give to this particular scene yeah, so that uh, scene, uh, look, I mean, uh, season two, one of the things that frustrated me just is putting myself in a fan's position as a viewer. I really wanted Beard just to, you know, give it to Nate and call him out on his bullshit in season two. And Beard seeing that, he's noticing it. And even in the, the finale of season two, Nate walks in and he's like, you seen this, Nate? And he holds up the headline and, and, and Nate's like, oh, no, that's uh, I didn't. And Beard just with his look knows that he's, he's you know, lying. 
And so, um, and then earlier in that episode, we set that up when, um, when Ted and uh, Kiggins comes into the office and says, a couple of birdies have found out that Nate is working at a restaurant and tooting. And um, they say he would come back to the team and Ted's, you know, open to that. And, um, and Roy comes in and said, what'd you think if we brought Nate back? And Roy's like, I don't care. And I found a couple of looks from Brendan uh, during that scene where he's, you just see him, he's just like melting inside. He's so angry. And then when Ted asked him, he's like, if you bring that Judas back, I will burn this place to the fucking ground. So we really set it up in that scene. And then that really helped when, when Ted is showing him the rest of the security camera video where he, you know, he's, he hides, but he still takes yeah. a moment to close the door window behind him when he, he goes out. So he still cares yeah. So yeah, then that all those moments, I think, finally built up to that moment where he's standing there in the um, in the doorway. We actually stole a cue and steal it. We repurposed it for from Beard's Night Out, that really creepy kind of haunting <laughs> cue there um, that Tom Howe wrote. We just lifted that from episode 209 and put that there. And it really kind of worked because it's very Beard kind of getting into this weird psychedelic moment. Like, what's going to happen? Is he going to headbutt Nate? And um, yeah, editorially, Jason wanted to um, find the right time to get to the closer coverage, which we needed to get to because Brendan had that incredible form performance. And on that one take is when he, that tear just came down his yes. eye quickly. And I was like, well, well, we're definitely using this. And we know yeah. we have close by then. But um, J again, Jason always tells me this, like, take your time. Let's earn the moment and let, let's get to the close coverage when it feels right. And uh, and then when they go into hug and he gives them the headbutt, uh, there's another great uh, piece of footage where you see um, Nate go to reach out to hug Beard and he doesn't know what to do and his hand just kind of hesitates, but then he hugs him. So that was another piece that I knew that that we needed. And, um, and then... Uh, we finally, we got the great pan off to uh, yeah. Jade, you know, eating those giant kebabs. Yeah. But yeah, it was a beautiful, beautiful scene, that one, yeah. Yeah, I, I love that scene. It's it's so good. Um, so just a couple more questions. I uh, I love talking about it. Ask away. Oh, I love it. I love talking <laughs> about it, too. Yeah. Um, so I was thinking about, you know, when Ted decides to move back. When do you think it is? Do you think it's him eating the sunflower bread and having that little moment. Do you think that's when he decides like this, like had that taste of home, his mom being there. Do you think that's when he decides that it's time to move back? Absolutely. I mean, there couldn't be a better moment. He tastes that bread that he loves. And that's a callback to uh, season one. You know, Jason is, loves the callbacks that they're set up in season one. He asked Rebecca in episode uh, 102 biscuits He's like, do you have any favorite food that reminds you of home? And she glances over at the biscuit box. And obviously that must remind her of something. And, and he's yeah. like, oh. So yes, that favorite food now pays off. And uh, two seasons later at, at the end. And I want to say a word about that that song there, um, Better to Have Fought and Lost by, by Sam Ryder. Um, so we needed a piece of music that was going to take us from the end of the, um, the thank you, fuck you scene with mom. Yes. Then take us through um, Rebecca um, uh, meeting, you know, with uh, Miss Cakes and with Bex and bringing them in. Um, and then through Ted waking up in the morning and mom is left and he tastes the sunflower bread and then into the back to home base at Richmond and the, um, the truth bomb scene with Ted and Rebecca. So I tried a couple of pieces there. And, you know, I wasn't sure. And then one day uh, Tom Howe uh, contacted us and said, hey, I've written this song. I was hoping it would go somewhere in season three. Maybe you need it in the finale or something. Just let me know. And, and it was supposed to go in the finale. But Melissa was like, I think we're all set for our music in here. Maybe you can find a home for it. And I listened to that and I said, oh, my God, the the lyrics, um, we will see you here. Same time, same place next year. That is the perfect lyric for setting up the truth bomb because that's what Rebecca yeah. said in season one and in season two that I'll I'll see you here next year when they do their annual truth bomb scene where they reveal something to each other. And I said, oh, my God, could this actually work here? And I put it in and I kind of roughed it in. And we have a wonderful music editor on the show and a music team. And 
and Tom and, and everyone is great. And um, so I sent it to our music editor, uh, Richard Brown, and he uh, helped me cut that in and make it so that it, it, it had that lyric just as we're going into the truth bomb scene. And then it ends right before we see Rebecca there waiting in, in Ted's office. And I put that in and it was magic. When you put a piece of music in like that, like, oh my God, this is it. And I sent that off in the, um, it was in the early cut, it was like in the director's cut. And Jason uh, saw it and he's like, what is that song? That's, that's incredible. Is that, is that Queen? Is that Freddie Mercury? And like, his voice really sounds like it. And we just felt like that is just beautiful. And it just really worked. And that's an example of our whole team and posts kind of coming together and, and, and making it, making it all happen. Um, but a great song. And um, I'm so thrilled he's, he's nominated for an Emmy. He deserves Yeah, it. I know. That's so wonderful. Yeah. 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 Uh, I actually want to ask you, my last question is about sure. that final scene, because I'm yeah. sure you know how there are shippers out there for Ted and Rebecca mm -hmm. and how, uh, so I always thought I was kind of like partially, like I'm fine with them being friends, but I'm like, oh, I could have seen them as, as more than friends too. But I thought, did, did you play with the edit a little bit where they kind of get closer together towards the end? Like there's this scene where they're like walking closer to each other. And I was wondering if you guys were kind of like, we're going to make them make viewers think maybe he's going to say, I like, not, it, it wouldn't make sense, but I was yeah. wondering if you were playing around with that a little bit, that tension. Yeah. I mean that, that we had that shot set up to, you know, bring them, you know, that, that we call it a 50, 50 in editing where you see both characters from the side and, you know, generally that's not the look of our show. And, and Jason usually doesn't go for shots like that, but then we, we needed to kind of bring them together to build a, not so much the, the faking you out that they might, if, you know, fall in love in that scene or right. say something, just to kind of tee them up for this moment and knowing that the, the truth bomb is going to cut um, to black. And then yeah. everyone's like, oh, you're depriving us of a scene. But no, the, the, the song Home by Brandy Carlisle, that is the truth bomb. The lyrics yeah. of that. When I think oh, of I didn't even think of that. That is the lyric. That is Ted giving the truth bomb through the voice of, of Brandy Carlisle from Home from the Wiz. Um, and he and Jason got her to record that, which is which is remarkable. Um, but yeah, I, look, I read, I love Twitter and there are Twitter fans are incredible. And I read all the so-called Ted Becca uh, people out there. And I, I sometimes laughed at what they had to say. I certainly feel for them. And I understand a lot of them were very upset about it. But, you know, Jason's spoken on this. I don't think that was their their friendship was very platonic. And then, I mean, earlier, actually, they talk about another scene in episode um, oh boy, five, when they do that, it's the psychic bully scene where Ted and Rebecca are walking down the hall. Yes. Uh, Rebecca is completely you know, freaked out about this psychic thing, predicting something true. And then Ted is very upset, learning that um, he thinks his son has been bullied, isn't it? Yeah. Henry. So the, the word psychic is on Rebecca's mind and the word bully is on Ted's mind. And they both use that, you know, sorry, I'm just being psychic, or um, I didn't mean to bully you. <laughs> they both have just great looks to each other. And then again, we go to that 50-50 shot, and then they both turn and walk off. And a lot of the fans thought that that was some sort of secret, uh, like, oh, this is it. They're, they're going to get together. I thought that too, and I was like, really? You get that? No, <laughs> no. And I, I replied, that, you know, look, I sometimes like to wade into these Twitter threads, maybe I shouldn't, but I, I replied to one of them and I said, no, no, that was that was always supposed to be the psychic bully scene and the the cue that Tom wrote there is called psychic bully. And so yeah, I guess our fans read read into to Ted Becca, but no. they also <laughs> well, they also said that that Ted called her Rebecca instead of boss. That was the other thing I saw that they were like, oh, there's something going on here. Right. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> It is true. That's it sounds true. like we read all the same threads. That's great. <laughs> right, yeah, that's good. Well, that was, you know, that's in general, I, I talked to, to Melissa about this, the pressure kind of built for us as editors as we went, you know, season one, no one knew what the show was. So we were just cutting it, you know, with sort of yeah. not knowing that this is a hit and then it turned into a massive hit. So season two and season three had that incredible sense of pri the privilege. I mean, I, I have the privilege to be having this job and to be trusted by Jason and our producers and creators, um, Brendan and Joe and the cast and 
to look at all these dailies that they shoot and think about the possibilities of how it could come together and to try different things and to craft the performance and make choices. And, and oftentimes, you know, Jason trusts us and that the performance that we choose is what goes forward. And other times we really dig into the nuance with him and we say, what other takes do we have? What other options do we have? And we kind of start building it uh, again. Um, but yeah, that, that's, Speaking of Twitter and the fans, just, I'm, I'm very much humbled by the whole um, experience and the privilege to work on this beautiful show and to not only get nominated for an Emmy, which I never thought would happen in my career, but to win an Emmy. Is yeah. Back there. Uh, oh, just, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's just something that was, it, the, look, the show changed so many people's lives, especially the fans who took to the message of believe and kindness and compassion and, and it changed everyone's life who worked on it without a doubt you can the, the examples are many you know people whose lives are changed by this show who worked on this show who built careers on this show and and you know and melissa had the benefit of cutting the last episode season 12 and there is a little bit of an outtake when the they actually yell cut on the very final last shot of, of ted lasso that was shot in london we did do some pickups later in california at the end but um the, everyone just cried and you could see that everyone came onto the set and applauded and so yes i think everyone is just uh truly appreciative of what it's done oh i'm i already miss it like crazy and i'm sure you do too so <laughs> yes of course <laughs> yeah 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 well thank you so much for your time and thank you for your thoughtful thank answers you. And yeah thanks Have for writing about day. our show and oh no and problem and getting the story out we really appreciate it i'm a huge fan so thank you so much <laughs> all right thank you megan believe a, yes yes have, have a wonderful day, day. Right. bye bye bye, -bye. bye.